Okay, so my name is Dr. Frederick Edward Fabelia, and I will be discussing the bystander effect. So let us begin. I will ask you a question. If an emergency was happening right in front of you, would you help the person in need? All right. So some of you might say yes. Others might answer no. And still others might answer it depends. It depends on what? Okay. Let's ask another question. This time I'm going to present to you a situation. If someone was having an emergency, which of these two situations would people be more willing to help? Okay, so I'll show you two pictures and try to find out if uh, people in a particular situation will be more willing to help a person in need. Okay, so you have their picture with a lot of people and there you have another picture with just uh, a few people. So in which situation will people be more willing to help? Okay, so if you have an answer to that question, let's now discuss the bystander effect. So the bystander effect can be better understood by its history. Okay, and it has something to do with the case of Kitty Genovese. So who was Kitty Genovese? So I'll show you her picture. Okay, so that's Kitty Genovese. And what happened to her? On March 13, 1964, a woman named Catherine Kitty Genovese was murdered outside of her apartment in Queens, New York. Over the course of a brutal attack lasting over 30 minutes, Genovese was stabbed at least 14 times. It was widely reported that despite Genovese's screams for help, not a single one of the 38 bystanders at the apartment that night came to her aid. So that's very curious. There are so many people who saw what was happening to Kitty Genovese, but no one dared to help. So let me ask you this question. Why do you think, despite so many people witnessing the crime, no one offered to help? Okay, so I remember. If you recall the situations wherein I asked you to choose between those two pictures, now you know. Okay, so the bystander effect has two factors. Let's discuss the first factor. It's called diffusion of responsibility. Okay, so when does diffusion of responsibility happen? The more onlookers there are, the less personal responsibility individuals will feel to take action. So that's what happened to Kitty Genovese. Okay, so look at this picture here. So if people see something happening, okay, they will come up with different excuses not to help. Okay, so look at the, the thought bubbles of the people in the cartoon. Okay, I'll show you another one. Everyone else will think that someone else will help. Okay, so that is diffusion of responsibility. Okay, now let's consider the second factor. It's called social influence. So what is social influence? Individuals monitor the behavior of those around them to determine how to act. So they will base their actions on the actions of other people. So what will happen if, instead of helping, everybody took pictures or videos of the emergency? It will be likely that you will also do the same because of social influence. Okay? Or what will happen if everybody ignored the emergency? Okay? It is likely that you too will do the same. So that is social influence. So you have diffusion of responsibility and social influence, these two factors, contribute to what is called the bystander effect. So what is the basis in research? So in the late 1960s, Darley and Latani in 1968 initiated an extensive research program on this so-called bystander effect. They found that any person who was the sole bystander helped. 
but only 62% of the participants intervened when they were part of a larger group of five bystanders. Okay. Following these first findings, many researchers consistently observed a reduction in helping behavior in the presence of others. This pattern is observed during serious accidents, non-critical situations, on the internet such as cyberbullying, and even in children. Okay, so the bystander effect has been proven time and again over and over by research, especially by experiments. All right, now let's go to reflection. I want you to think about this. Will people help you in a crowded place now that you know the bystander effect? Is there truly safety in numbers? If you are in imminent danger, will you go to a crowded place or to a place with few people? Okay, so what is the recommendation? Since we already know that the bystander effect exists. What if you are the one in need of help and there are a lot of people around? One recommendation is this. Single out one person from the crowd. Make eye contact and ask that individual specifically for help. By personalizing and individualizing your request, it becomes much harder for people to turn you down. Okay, so that's the first recommendation. The second recommendation is this, help others. By helping others, you benefit too. In fact, when you do good things for others, it activates the part of your brain responsible for your reward system. And activity is reduced in the areas in your brain linked to stress. So helping others reduces one's stress. Okay, so that ends my discussion on the bystander effect. If you want to stay updated with my upcoming lectures, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Prof. Eric F. Thank you very much.